Edith later characterized as her stewardship. Many consider her the first female president of the United States. So much more goes into being a leader, being a president, than, than, than just, just being smart. The 28th Lady of the Land and a bloodline descendant of Pocahontas. One lady stepped up to a position of leadership that left her with the legacy of the first lady president. Edith Wilson positively impacted warring America and left a legacy as the First Lady President. She exemplified leadership as First Lady by volunteering for the Red Cross and assisting soldiers, submerging herself into the presidential matters of Mr. Wilson, and helping her husband in office when a stroke made him incapable of completing his duties. Edith Bowling was born in the year of 1872 in Wytheville, Virginia, and was the seventh out of eleven children. In 1896, Edith married Norman Gault, the owner of Gault & Brothers Jewelry Store. Mr. Gault passed away in 1908. Seven years later, Edith was introduced to President Woodrow Wilson. She was a widow who had inherited and ran Galt Jewelers. She drove an electric car. She was flirtatious. She was cheerful. She was 15 years younger than Woodrow and bursting with vitality. Both Woodrow and Edith were immediately infatuated with one another and they constantly were sending love letters. Only a couple months later, they were married, making her his second wife. They loved to be together, whether it was at a baseball game or on a stroll through town. Shortly after their marriage, Woodrow Wilson was re-elected president for his second term, making Edith Wilson the new first lady. But soon after his inauguration in March of 1917, the Germans announced unrestricted submarine warfare, and the United States was drawn into the war. Because of America's new involvement in World War I, Edith Wilson had a new set of responsibilities. Edith volunteered for the Foundation Red Cross once a week and helped to assist soldiers. She would spend time raising money to donate to the charity as well. She sheared sheep that lived on the White House property then auctioned off their wool. After selling the wool of 48 sheep, she raised about $53,000 to go towards helping soldiers. Edith Wilson also made sure that the White House was involved in fundraisers for the war effort. Edith Wilson showed great leadership for America by volunteering for the organization Red Cross. Being First Lady, others were influenced by her act of helping and it showed how much she cared for the soldiers who were being sent off to fight. Another leadership role that Edith chose to take as First Lady was to involve herself with the presidential matters of her husband. They named battleships together. He had to sign commissions for hundreds of new officers in the army, and she made a little game of it. Edith would sit in the same room and listen as her husband held meetings with foreign representatives and political leaders. She would also travel across the world with Mr. Wilson for his job. Woodrow took the unprecedented step of going to Europe to negotiate the peace treaty himself. Edith, of course, went with him. Edith continually did all of this because she felt it was her duty as the First Lady. Also, she loved her husband so much that she always wanted to be with him. What she really liked to do was anything to do with Woodrow. By submerging herself into the work of her husband, Edith Wilson showed great leadership. She was a very involved First Lady and showed that she cared enough for her country and her husband to be that way. In October of 1919, Woodrow Wilson suffered from a debilitating stroke. During the League of Nations tour, the president had multiple headaches and illnesses. Dr. Carrie T. Grayson told Edith it was caused by overwork and stress. A few days later, his stroke occurred, leaving him paralyzed on his left side. Edith Wilson did not want the public to know of Woodrow's state, so she kept it a secret between her and the doctors. She was afraid that, if people did know, they would want Vice President Thomas R. Marshall to assume the position as president. 
Edith did not want her husband to be removed from office because she knew that Vice President Marshall would not want to continue pursuing the League of Nations idea that Woodrow started. Edith stepped in, assumed more power than any First Lady had ever done. She took on the responsibility of assisting her husband. She read through all papers and decided which should go to him. She would take his hand and help him write his signature. And she would pose Woodrow in pictures to make it seem as if he were fine. Edith virtually ran the country while her husband was ill. During this time, people did not expect much from women. They had the positions of housewives and they were just starting to earn rights. No one pushed Edith Wilson to take over for her husband and no one truly believed she was capable of being in that power of leadership. Despite these beliefs, she gave herself the duty of helping her husband in the position of president. Edith Wilson didn't follow the standards that women were expected to follow. Instead, she showed that a lady could run the country just like a man could. After Woodrow's term ended, word of his stroke got out, and people learned of how Edith had assisted him. Edith Wilson showed leadership for America by assisting her husband after his stroke. Edith Wilson was not a power-hungry woman who was a leader just for control. She was a lady whose motives were driven by her love and compassion for her husband and her country. The 28th Lady of the Land and a bloodline descendant of Pocahontas left a legacy of being the first lady president. <laughs>